Hello and welcome to e-learning campus. In today's class, we are going to learn about generations of computers. Let's start with the first generation of computer, 1940 to 1956. The first generation computers were based on the use of vacuum tubes. Input was based on punch cards and paper tapes and output was displayed on printouts. These computers used magnetic tapes to store data. These computers relied on machine language to perform any operation and could solve any one problem at a time. These computers were slow, expensive and large in size and consumed a large amount of energy. Univac, ENIAC and EDVAC are the example of first generation computers. Along with these features, there are many limitations of first generation computers. Like the functioning of these computers depend on machine language in zeros and ones. Therefore, these computers were not very easy to program. They were generally designed as special purpose computers. Therefore, they were not very flexible in running different types of applications. Vacuum tube technology made these computers very large and bulky. It was not as easy task to install them properly. Due to their huge size, they were not easily transferable from one place to another and also required to be placed in cool places. They generated huge amount of heat and hence they required proper maintenance at regular intervals. The second generation computers 1956 to 1963 the second generation computers used transistors in place of vacuum tubes punched cards and paper tapes were used as input device and output was presented through printouts second generation computers moved from machine language to assembly language which allowed the programmers to specify instructions in words fortran cobol Basic languages came into existence in these generation. The first generation, like the first generation, these computers relied on magnetic tapes. These computers were faster, cheaper, smaller and more efficient than the computers of first generation. For example, IBM 400, IBM 350, etc. There were some limitations of second generation computers too. The input and output media for these computers were not improved to a considerable extent. They were still required to be placed in air conditioned place. Due to their high cost, they were beyond the reach of home users. Like first generation computers, they were also special purpose computers and could execute only specific applications or tasks. Now we have third generation of computer 1964 to 1971. Integrated circuits IC were used as the main technology in these computers. IBM system 360, Apple 1, Altair are some of the examples of third generation computers. Keyboard was used as an input device whereas monitor and printer were used as output devices. Magnetic disk were used for the storage. These computers were small in size and had huge storage capacity, higher calculating speed and reliability than the previous generation of computers. Pascal, BRPG languages came into use during this time. But still, there were some disadvantage of these computers like very small storage capacity. Because of small storage capacity, the performance of these computers degraded while executing large applications. The cost of these computers was very high. They were still required to be placed in air-conditioned places. Next, we have fourth generation computers. 1972-1989 The fourth generation computers, that is the present day computers, are based on very large scale integrated circuits, VLSI 
C called microprocessors. Input is done through keyboard, mouse, scanner, etc. Besides monitor and printer, various new devices such as plotter and speaker have evolved as output devices. High capacity magnetic disks were used to store data. These computers can be linked together to share storage capacity, space, and data. The use of microprocessors resulted in decreased size and increased efficiency in fourth generation computers. These computers are portable, reliable, and cheapest among all the all other other generations. The example of fourth generation computers are Apple Macintosh, IBM PC, etc. But few problems associated with fourth generation computers. It was difficult to bind LSI and VLSI chips on the wiring board. It required complicated technologies to bind these chips. The working of this computer is still highly dependent on the instructions given by the programmer. Now we have fifth generation of computer. As you know, Many improvement or development made during this generation of computer like development of various portable computer such as laptop, pocket computer, personal digital assistance, etc. Development of centralized computers called server invention of optical disk technologies. The use of ultra large scale integrated technology ULSI helps in decreasing the size that they can be used while traveling. They are versatile for communications and resource sharing. Nowadays, scientists are making some serious efforts in the field of artificial intelligence and expert system applications. Fifth generation computers involve artificial intelligence where computers can behave, think and react in the same way as humans do. Artificial intelligence include robotics, Neural networks, game playing, development of expert system to make decision in real life situations. Natural language, understanding as well. These computers are still in development, though there are some applications such as voice recognition that are being used today. The goal of fifth generation computing is to develop devices that respond to natural language input and to intimate human reasoning. IBM Watson is perfect example for AI enabled device. This table summarizes the generation of computer being an electronic device. Size, capability and power of a computer are greatly influenced by the existing state of electronics of the time. If electronic components and devices of any time were big, slow and unreliable, then computers of the time were also big, slow and unreliable. On the other hand, fast, reliable and smaller electronic component made the computer faster, reliable and smaller in size. For example, you can see the change in technologies. There was a time when vacuum tubes were quite popular. They were freely used in majority of electronic equipments like in first generation computers. After some time, they were replaced by transistors, so second generation of computers used it. Later, integrated circuits came at the time of third generation. Then LSI, VLSI, ULSI technologies came and set a new path for electronic developments. Students, that's all in generations of computer. If you like this video, please like it, share it and subscribe my channel. Thank you.